Hey guys, Takamasaki, and welcome back to another book chat. This week I went through Stephen Campbell's series, or I started Stephen Campbell's series of Hard Luck Hank, and I read the first, listen to, uh, the first book called Screw the Universe. Uh, what Hard Luck Hank is, is he is on a space station with like this gigantic city, like it seems like nobody knows the population of it. It started off as like, there must be a million people here. And there's like, well, there must be 100,000 people here. And I think by the end of the book, it was down to like 80,000. But anyway, they're in this really remote part of space. Um, I can't remember the race. Cold, 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 something like that. But anyway, they, um, they're on this very, very far edge of this empire space where virtually nobody ever goes so this space station is it's kind of like old school gangster you have crime bosses there's probably like a hundred different crime bosses in this place uh there's like a guy for food guy for drugs etc cetera, etc cetera. um the gambling boss can't forget the gambling boss ever so hard luck hank is a mutant i mean it's pretty common in this in this universe he his mutation is well they take it by levels we're like the level one is like using the books example like level one is a mutant that can like if he focuses and touches a surface he can like make it slightly warmer like for a little bit so that's like the lamest mutant uh hank is a level four where his i don't know if you want to call it a superpower i guess close enough um his mutation is he has really thick skin he can like he's pretty much bulletproof he is bulletproof there's a couple instances in the book where uh people shoot him and like shoot him right in the head and the bullets like stuck there it's not that he can't feel it because he mentions that like yeah this really effing hurts and like he just i guess to make a statement he just kind of left it there <laughs> um and eventually let it pop out on its own um he can still be hurt like in the initial part of the book he had a whole shipping crate dropped on him and it like kind of smushed him i just picture looney tunes and just when they get smashed they do that but but yeah um so he's kind of like what he is he's like the mediator so say this crime boss has i'll use the first example of the book these people who were delivering alcohol into this space station they wanted a certain amount of credits or whatever because sci-fi book you have to use credits um it seems that way but they wanted all these credits and this i think it was one of the crime bosses obviously that were buying all this and he didn't pay so obviously these guys that delivered all this stuff were all pissed off and getting ready to shoot hanks called out there to kind of hey smooth it over he'll talk to this side he'll go over here and talk to this side and they'll meet in the middle um he threw a lot of the part th that's where the shipping crate was dropped on him too while he was negotiating i don't it didn't seem like it really explained whether it was done on purpose or by accident. I'm assuming it was on purpose to try to kill Hank, but, but yeah, they had to yank him out and they ended up like ripping his pants off. And it's just, it's a really bizarre book. It's, it's like half comedy, half science fiction and half something else. So you add those percentages up and say, I'm saying, but, uh, just what that is like so much of the first, 75% of the book is Hank uh, visiting these people to either negotiate for person A to person B, or he's doing a job. Like there are these mutants that come in, apparently a really hot mutant with blue skin and flappy ears. Uh, her name was Jian, and then she is a mutant herself where she's she claims to be a level four also, but she can like shoot lightning out of her fingers and electrocute stuff i guess but she has a brother who nobody knows is a level 10 mutant and people are chasing them and apparently it seems like the only way this guy can use his powers 
is by just taking a buttload of drugs, injecting whatever, getting completely bombed. Um, and somehow this, like, he can change the entire environment. At one point, he, I don't know if he knocked everybody in the space station out. He was, they went to this bar and Hank got called off to talk to one of the, one of the leader, one of the boss leaders or the crime bosses. And he, while he's talking to them, I believe it mentioned like somebody came over and they're being like intimidating and being D bags to GN or something. And he lost it. And his like eyes start to glow. Hank comes running out because this crime boss just passed out on the floor. Why it didn't affect Hank. I, I don't know. Maybe because of his thick skin, but yeah, like the whole space station is completely unconscious and they, eventually wake up they think they said like six people even died from that happening hank can't explain it because he's a man of his word and told gn that she wouldn't he wouldn't tell uh the like the head security person oh god i can't remember her name i'm so crappy with names just <laughs> give me a break with that um yeah he can't tell this like leader of security because he also works for her and they're there seemed to be a lot going on in the book. There's this story with those two mutants. There's Hank's main storyline and just the back quarter of the book. Holy God. Um, getting there. <laughs> the, okay, so he's earning credits for doing all these weird jobs. He occasionally kills people, but he only does it if he, usually if he really has to, he killed a crime boss near the end of the book by blowing his head off with this, quadruple barrel shotgun he's got um he had this i believe they called it untankian something like that some kind of technology where it's like a little pistol that he didn't really know how to use or he knew how to use it it's just a pistol but he turns it on it would glow green and he was always afraid to use it because the lore of these things is because they're so old they just <laughs> right in your face and kill everybody um there was a time where he, there were he did fire it twice he ends up losing the gun um the first time he fired it it goes through this machine race that were sent there it never really did it specify why they were there i think it was because they were after this level 10 mutant and they never found him because well hank ended up kind of killing both he kills one definitely uh the other credit he He's really slow because he's so lumbering and he's got all these layers of skin and muscle, assumably. He chases this machine while it's just wailing on him and kicking him and punching him. And he chases it all the way down to where this, I can't remember the name of this race either, but his name is Wooly. Oh God, I'm so terrible with it. But anyway, he's like a, he's a giant Kalesian key. I think it's Keesian, Kalesian, Kalesian. That sounds right. Anyhow, uh, one of the crime bosses has this really giant guy, and he just beats the crap out of anything. Doesn't like Hank whatsoever. Uh, Hank chases this mon this robot type monster all the way over, and this giant guy ends up. I think he. I think that was the time he. No, that wasn't the time he punted Hank. Um, that was the second time he sent him to the hospital where he like, I don't know if he hit him with like a giant truncheon or just punched him into the ground, but he woke up and like a lot of his bones were broken. He didn't have any more of his teeth. And apparently the giant just ripped the robot apart. And that was that, I suppose. Um, man, already at freaking nine minutes. So there's that storyline. Eventually... I don't remember what called them out there. I think maybe the disturbances with these robots, but the, like the Confederation Navy came over with like this capital ship that they called the, the dreadnoughts. And then they had, well, that was on like this other side of the worm gate. Like they knew it was there, but they didn't, but yeah, there were like battleships and stuff approaching. So the space station's freaking out. Everybody's 
trying to clean up and get rid of all their drugs and all their banned paraphernalia, obviously. They're not going to be able to do this. They've been doing it for God knows how long. So they think the Navy is after them. And then it, like, really builds up like they're going to – like there's going to be a big takeover. And then the book, like from that part on – I want to say that probably started a little after halfway it seems like the pedal was just smashed into the ground and then so much just happens in a blur it could just be me and just the way i don't know maybe audiobook doesn't present it fairly enough but okay so the navy boards the space station and in like it seems like the span of a few chapters they're they're arresting people you never see these people again you they just said they didn't take any main characters obviously but all these people are being taken away assumably to a ship or something i they were getting arrested i i don't know what exactly was going on there um obviously a lot of reasons to arrest people because of all this contraband and other illegal activities that are going on but so they kind of attack attack loosely they don't start really shooting up the place or anything uh there's a rebellion that started by like the main journalist guy who's like he's the only guy that publishes papers in the whole space station for these x thousand amount of people uh he i don't know if he like was the leader but he was a big part of it and then a lot of the crime bosses, because they didn't want their, you know, their turf encroached on, uh, they all joined this rebellion. And it just felt like the span of maybe out of the 45 chapters, it seems like at most like eight, it felt like. And this book is a short read, too. It's only nine hours on audiobook. So in like the span of five chapters, the Navy comes in. There's a very short rebellion um it's hank is somehow i don't even remember how he ended up he got captured but i don't know like he somehow gets put into this navy at like a reasonably high rank so like he talks to both sides but it turns out oh they're not actually here to uh, clean this place up and do inspections they don't give a shit about any of that they are here because this the strongest race in the universe is coming along and they have these gargantuan ships that are planetoid and like anything that gets near them is sucked into their orbit and sucked into the ship and the ship the ship assimilates it into an even bigger part of the ship and then the book was kind of losing me at this point because so much was going on. You meet a lot of characters. There's a few different storylines to follow. Uh, the one with Jian and her brother. Uh, that one kind of ended. Like they were trying to get off the planet because this level 10 mutant was attracting attention, they assumed. And then that one kind of got left alone near the end of the book. Um... Like, Hank was kind of in a relationship with this girl, and then he comes back, and then he, like, oh, God, so much is weird at the end. Not to say it's not entertaining. It just, my mind is just all over the place trying to remember it because there was so much in just the back part of the book. So the super race is coming, assumably, to assimilate all these areas into their into their planetoid thing all the royalty of this species have this planetoid thing so they're at the space station after that the navy flees like they why i don't know they like they wanted these telescopes or something like that on the space station to be functional but if they know that planetoid thing is coming and they're going to suck it up anyway why bother um yeah, the Navy thing was really, maybe it's going somewhere in the second book, but I just felt like a lot of it was really unnecessary. Just a lot of stuff built up to not a lot happening. And they they know this gigantic royal ship is coming, so 
they just piss off and leave all the people at the space station there. Uh, seemingly, seemingly more than enough room to take all these people. And it hints like, yeah, we might get into a battle, so we're just going to go ahead and... <laughs> you guys, fend for yourself. Throw the drugs at them. Um, so near the end of the book, Hank is loaded into this ship. He is assumably, assumably going to commit suicide. It's loaded up with this explosive stuff. Oh, yeah, you know how I am with names. Um, what the stuff is called, it's really explosive. So they, like, pack it up in kind of like this thing that looks like debris. There's metal sticking out of it, and it's just a butt ton of this explosive stuff. And the idea was Hank was going to get sent over there to blow up this ship, but the closer he gets to it, there's apparently a few windows in this piece of scrap. Um, the closer he gets to it, the more he realizes, yeah, that's not going to happen. And then things just are really bananas from there. So he is taken into this gigantic ship, somehow didn't die. He wakes up by these weird alien creatures, the Lou or something like that. Um, they're like the servants of this big race. They they wake him up, they drag him like miles and miles down the space spaceship corridors and put him into this like this council with a bunch of other races and it just seemed like it wanted me to or just wanted to introduce a lot of races or maybe it was just trying to have fun with it but there was like the gaseous race there's like this fat race there was this rock race um it named it gave them names it gave the race names and it, it was just so much to take in that like out of maybe the 10 or 12 it seemed like it explained i remember the gas one and i remember the like the giant or like the rock rock type ones and one of them had a necklace of that explosive stuff i i was I wasn't totally sure what was going on, but it turns out that Hank is actually granted a meeting to go see this prince because none of that explosive stuff detonated, and it's really rare. Uh, this came into play, by the way, from the level 10 mutant back at the space station. He can create whatever he wants. Um, Delturium? That sounds about right for the explosive stuff. But um, So they he has all of this stuff. All this explosive, really rare material. He was going to blow up the ship. It ends up being just his luggage. So he barters with this prince who is... He's like a giant crystal or something that was spinning around the room. And I think he said it was like miles long. And there are like a bunch of those little assistant guys or slaves, I guess. I don't know. Whatever they are. Um, helping him out for whatever reason and then it's negotiated that okay this giant planetoid thing will go piss off elsewhere and go attack this race Dolmechian? Dolmechian? The, the machine the robots that came and attacked the space station earlier it's agreed that well I think they agreed on that God, so much was going on at the end of the book um so allegedly if I recall correctly this giant planetoid was going to go after this metal race because for whatever reason it needs planets so it's either negotiate this where they're going to give this race all of their output of this explosive stuff i got about a minute so um they give all this explosion stuff and the big planetoid thing will go piss off and allegedly attack somewhere else they said it needed 100 of some planet and then like 300 of another planet to keep growing for some re reason this race needs to it's like their thing to expand. So I had a really hard time following, as I've mentioned about 24 times in this book, I had a really time hard time sticking with it at the end. But that is essentially all I'm going to say for the first book of Hard Luck Hank. I looked at the covers of the Goodreads reviews. Uh, I haven't read any of the reviews for any of the books yet. I probably should. But uh, the, the score goes up, which it usually does when you have series like this. So I will leave it at that. And if you want to give it a read, it is Hard Luck Hank, Screw the Universe by Stephen Collins. 
Uh, feel free to give it a read. I'll recommend it. It's good fun if you're into sci-fi stuff. So this is Takamasak. I'll see you later.